Hey guys, I'm a forester here. Well, it's a cold rainy morning here in South Carolina and I don't have any gear to review, but I thought I'd make a video just talking with you. I'm sipping on a, sup on a cup of coffee and um, this won't be a coffee review. It won't be a review of any type of product, but I will show you what I'm drinking. This is a coffee that I haven't reviewed for you before. This is called Silva Coffee and it's a produced by a startup who happens to be a friend of mine and a co-worker and um, at a future video maybe in a month or so i'll formally review that coffee and uh, I'll link you to his website so you can purchase some and try it yourself but for now just take it that i do enjoy the coffee let me set that aside and and um, get into the discussion you can tell from the title that it's about China. Something newsworthy is going on that I wanted to comment. My daughter, our daughter, first moved to China in, I got to refer to my notes, in July of 2011. Now, up until that time, I had always been known to say, I'll travel internationally when I've seen all there is to see in the United States. I had absolutely no desire to travel overseas and that's just how I felt about it. There's, the United States is a fantastic country and uh, there's plenty I haven't seen. I haven't seen Yellowstone Park. I haven't seen a lot. My wife and her family traveled a lot and saw all the national parks and all when they were growing up. So she's seen all that stuff, but I haven't. So I wanted to do a lot of traveling and maybe I will uh, in retirement to see some of those things. But I had absolutely no desire to travel internationally. Well, what happened? My daughter, uh, they were having trouble. She got married here in the United States. They were having trouble after the recession getting uh, full-time jobs at paid benefits. And so she took off on her own, traveled to South Korea, found a uh, job teaching English as a second language. She saved up enough money to bring her husband over. And they decided in the first year that they would go ahead and have a child. And uh, he couldn't work over there. And so uh, they felt like that was a good opportunity for them to have a child. He could take care of the child uh, at home while she worked. Well, so Brooke, our granddaughter, you've met her on several videos. Her Chinese name is Xia Xi. <clears throat> and I asked her recently which she preferred. I always call her Brooke, and she said she prefers Xia Xi because that's what all her friends call her. So I'm trying to remember to call her Xia Xi. But um, she was born in October of 2012, and we were there within a week of uh, her being born. Well, that was the first. Oh, and I did make a video to introduce you to her when she was one, one week old. And that video, I'll put a link at the end of this one. It's called, I think, EDC Gangnam Style, which is where she was born in Gangnam, South Korea, which is a suburb south of uh, Seoul, a business district south of Seoul. And uh, so anyway, that was a neat video. I like going back and watching some of those that I mainly make for family, but uh, you're welcome to watch them also. But that was the first of 12 trips that we've made to Asia, three to South Korea and nine to China. Uh, my daughter stayed in South Korea for, I think it was three years, but she moved. Let me look at my notes here. She moved to South Korea in July of 2011. She moved to China in March of 2014. Uh, basically, South Korea was very, especially where she was in near Seoul, was very expensive. You can save money, but uh, not, not much, not enough to really save money and come back to pay off school debts and that type thing. So she found an opportunity to go to China both she and her husband could teach, and they had bo both been teaching for the years that they've been in China. Well, that first trip to South Korea uh, was followed up by two more trips in South Korea, and then we've made nine trips to China since she moved there in 2014. Now, we haven't done a lot of sightseeing in China. We mainly just go over our first trip. We did some sightseeing and we've done a little bit of sightseeing like to the Southern Great Wall on our last visit. 
and to tea plantations, but most of it has been right around the area where my daughter lives in Hangzhou, China. It happens to be a beautiful city though and a neat place to go and visit. But this is the first fall in eight years that we haven't visited China. And some years we've stayed over there, one year in particular we stayed there for one whole month out of the year, one twelfth of the year we spent in China. And we've really enjoyed visiting over there, getting to know some people. Um, and so it's, it's been a neat opportunity that I'm glad uh, my daughter made that decision and we were able to go and share the experience with her. Wish we could have done more. But I do want to say that it's been an extremely hard trip for us to make. And I just wanted to give you an idea. Some of you have made that trip, so you know what I'm talking about. But typically, on an average trip, we leave the house here at 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we usually find cheaper flights if we drive out of Charlotte. So it's a couple hours drive to get up to the airport in Charlotte. Uh, of course, there's waits at the airport going through the uh, security and all that, checking our luggage. But then there's a flight, and it's a fairly short flight, an hour, hour and a half or so, to either Chicago or to San Antonio, or no, um, Dallas-Fort Worth is where we normally fly out of, or Chicago. So that's a fairly short flight. That goes by pretty quickly. I always try to schedule a two-hour wait before our connecting flight to Shanghai, and that's usually sufficient but one time it wasn't and we really had a long trip that time because we missed our flight to Shanghai. But the flight to Shanghai is the one that really wears us out. That is typically a 13 to 14 hour flight depending on where we leave from. So we left the house at 4 a.m. We typically get to Shanghai by 2 or 3 p.m. the next day. Now I'm going to adjust for the time difference here in a minute. But um, then we go through security and everything, get our luggage, walk to a bus station that I know where it is now. We get on a bus and it's a three hour bus ride to Hangzhou. That goes pretty quickly, but we're very tired by then. We walk to the subway station and take a 45 minute subway ride to my daughter's community, then a 20 minute walk either to her apartment or to the hotel where we're staying. So by the time we get situated for the night, it can be seven or eight o'clock the next day from when we left. Now there's a 12 hours di hour difference. So if you back it up, it would be maybe from 4 a.m. on Sunday morning to 7 a.m. on Monday morning in actual time. It's easily a 24 hour trip and sometimes 26 or 27 hour trip. So it really wears us down and typically one or the other of us, my wife or I get sick on the trip. And so that makes it uh, even more difficult. So for that and other reasons, we've decided what's newsworthy about this video, we're not going to China. So this is my China video. Uh, some of you that follow the channel may be used to seeing two or three videos come out in the spring and in the fall about China. And I try to find interesting things to film while I'm over there. Um, there's a tsunami that comes through every August or September. I filmed that one time. I've done street scenes. I've done a lot of different videos. Um, one on bike sharing, I think, got some interest. But uh, this is the China video. Uh, this year. So we're not going to go. It's the first time we haven't been in Asia in eight years. So I guess the question, one question is what am I going to do with my two, two weeks of free time? And primarily I'm going to catch up on a lot of the home repairs that I've been putting off for eight years. So we're trying to catch up and get our house into shape. I'll be working in the bedroom, putting up some crown molding, um, this morning and actually it's already up I'm just going to be caulking it and painting over it but uh, I'll just be catching up on things and the real question is will we ever go back to China and I don't know the answer to that I know that um, I would like to go one more time because 
we haven't really done gone to China just to sightsee. And uh, you may have met, I think you've met my sister-in-law, Xia, Xia, and um, we would like to go back one time when we can uh, take Shia with us and just do sightseeing. She she's, makes an excellent guide, and so I don't know if that'll happen, but Shia, if you're watching this video, sometime in the future, we would like to go back one more time. There are things that I wasn't able to do. I'd like to stay in a cave hotel. I'd like to go to Chengdu to see uh, the pandas and also eat the food that I've heard about in Chengdu. I'd like to go to Mongolian Desert, ride a camel. She has done that and uh, we have some pictures of it. But there's plenty of things that we would still like to do. So maybe one more trip and we'll make some videos of that. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the video and um, I just wanted to comment let you know if you were thinking that we might go to China which we've gone every spring and every fall for I think basically eight years we're not going this year so this is the China video let me talk about my EDC just for a second I, I um, have changed it up a little bit now you know I'll start with the handgun you know that I've uh, recently purchased a SIG um, 365 and I enjoy carrying it. I've been considering getting a new a uh, outside the waistband holster for it but I haven't made that decision yet and just out of nostalgia I think more than anything else I switched a couple of days ago to this handgun right here. This is my car PM9 and uh, this is an excellent handgun. I mean it's lighter it doesn't carry as many rounds which could be a negative but it makes it lighter to carry in my pocket so I've gone back to that for this week on my knife I got I have so many knives that I just don't have the opportunity to carry it's nice to pull a knife out of the drawer every once in a while and carry it again it's almost like learning a knife all over again now some of you may recognize this. I've made videos of it. This is a Southern Grind Spider Monkey. And what I realized in carrying this knife this week is that it's a perfect size for an EDC knife. The blade, this is a high quality steel blade, so it's S35VN blade. It holds an edge. It's a great design, and I don't see a lot of videos about these um, knives out on the internet. I got one out there and I'll just comment. Take a look at Southern Grind. Go to their website, price a knife or two, and uh, they make it several models. I really like this one. It's a great size for what I need in a, in a normal day. So that's my gun and knife, and I've been carrying those pretty much all week. Uh, you know I'm into fountain pens. The, the pen that I'm carrying today is and I've carried this week is this Moon Man M600 this is made it was made in China it was one of the Chinese pens that I bought on a past trip I don't know if it was in the spring or last fall I, I can't remember but I did uh, it ran out of ink today when I was doing some writing this morning and so I refilled it with my Mont Blanc Irish green so it's freshly filled and I'll be writing with it probably for the next month off of that one fill. Now, I did a number of videos on wallets recently. And this is a pop-off wallet. This is a bifold. So, I did a video on this one and one other one. And I'm big into minimalist wallets. But this morning, before I made this video actually, I made the decision to switch all my gear my money and everything back to this bifold wallet and carry it in my back pocket. The reason I did that or I thought about doing it and decided to go ahead and do it was because I've been leaving a couple of things behind and uh, one is a gas card that I use and um, I have to have a PIN number to, uh, to purchase gas for work and I leave my, my uh, paper with the PIN number on it in 
that this wallet, I had it in here, I thought I'd lost it. So anyway, there was a couple of things that I had done without and uh, needed them. And so I decided I'm going to go back to this because with this, you don't have to worry. You can take, I won't turn it around because I didn't conceal anything, but you can put everything in this wallet and carry it in your back pocket. So I'm going to go back to this. I wasn't sure when I did those videos on these wallets, whether I would actually convert to carrying one of these long term or just go back. What I actually did was I went back to carrying in the wallet that I carried before, a Jeffrey Bean wallet. So I've been carrying it in that. I'm switching back to this for the time being and we'll see what happens um, in the future. Guys, that's it. It's still raining outside. I think I'll go get busy in the bedroom with the crown molding and um, hopefully one day in the near future I'll be able to show you what I'm up to in remodeling some of the house. I'll talk to y'all later. Hope you have a good day. And I'll be pulling for Clemson later on today. They're playing Wake Forest at Clemson. Maybe it's not raining up there. We'll see. Y'all take care.